Hello and welcome. Harvey Olivio with Carrington College, clinical instructor. I've got the respiratory guy with me on video. Greetings, everyone. And we are going to do our competency for manual resuscitation. So to start things off, we're going to go ahead and observe standard precautions. So make sure you've got gloves on, gown, um, protective eyewear, anything that would be necessary based on your hospital's protocol. Now, after I put all my PPE on, I'm going to get the equipment. So today I have lots of equipment on. I've just kind of spread them out across the um, bed. So we have lubricating jelly. Make sure that it is water-based jelly. Um, and then make sure that there's no petroleum in there. We have what's called an NPA, and these come in several different sizes. Uh, this one, the size is kind of worn off, but know that there's different sizes. Um, also, this is an OPA, so OPA also comes in different sizes, different types. You'll see ones with a hole down the middle. You'll see ones with grooves on the sides. And then um, we have what's called a peep valve. So I recommend a peep valve be used whenever you're using the Ambu bag. Um, we have the mask for the Ambu bag. We have the actual Ambu bag with the oxygen tubing. And then we have a non-rebreather with the mask and bag and tubing. Uh, so that's all our equipment that we have. And then we are going to go ahead and assemble the mask. So uh, Mr. Smith, my name's Harvey. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a mask on you. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell them what you're going to do. So we have this mask. I'm going to go ahead and for demonstration purposes, I'll turn the air on, but I won't keep it on uh, because it's kind of loud. So I'm going to turn this on. You would want to go 10 to 15 liters, and then you would want to hold this down. And when you hold this part down with the one-way valve, it actually helps to inflate the bag quicker. So if you um, inflate the bag once it's fully inflated, and let's just say you start with 10 liters, and the bag is collapsing a little bit when you put it on the patient, you know that that's not meeting the patient's inspiratory drive or ventilation requirements, so you would definitely have to go 15 or flush. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the patient. Always try to open up the bridge of the nose a little bit with the metal piece. Make sure that the straps are not too tight. Make sure you don't release it and it snaps the person. And then make sure it's comfortable with their ears and everything around. Mr. Smith, I'm going to go ahead and put this on you. Okay, this would be inflated completely. We would go ahead and make any adjustments that we need to make. If we need to squeeze this a little bit, we would adjust that and then make sure that you've got a good seal around the patient. Um, now that we're doing the non-rebreather, we're gonna go ahead and lift the, actually lower the bed. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower the bed. And then I'm gonna get my other supplies ready. So now that we have the non-rebreather on, we're gonna do uh, manual resuscitation uh, with the Ambu bag. So you're always going to be at the head of the bed in most situations because respiratory should be at the head of the bed. So I'm going to remove this mask now, okay? Then I'm going to go ahead and position the patient's head appropriately, okay? Then I'm going to go ahead and get my ambu bag ready. So again, we're not gonna turn on the compressor just for a noise level so that you can still hear what we're saying. So I'm gonna plug this in. Of course, I would turn it to 15 liters or flush. If you're gonna use a, a peep valve, and I do recommend using a peep valve, you may need to take a part off. So this particular one, we remove this one and we place the peep valve on. So this particular peep valve, you turn it to set your peep. So right there would be 10. And if I went out further, it would be 5. And then if I wanted to increase it, I would go to whatever level of peep that I want to place the patient on. Okay. So you definitely want to hold the bag like this. That way you can compress it. Make sure you've got a good mass. Make sure it's the appropriate size for your patient. Some masks are able to inflate a little bit if it's deflated. Um, this one does not have it, but some have a little port where you can take a syringe, like a 10 cc syringe, and inject some air to make this inflated. Okay. Before I place this on the patient, I'm going to get the uh, NPA, which is nasal uh, pharyngeal airway, and OPA, it's oral pharyngeal airway. 
and then I'm going to set these to the side because I want to talk about these. So never use an OPA in a conscious patient. This will cause a gag reflex, potential to vomit. So you definitely don't want to put this in someone that's alert and oriented. So for intense purposes, demonstration, let's pretend my patient is not awake and then I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready. So different size, you wanna measure from the jawbone to the mouth. And then this is gonna go in on this angle. Some people like to do upward and turn around. Um, it's really your preference. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert this in. So I will start on my mannequin and kinda of turn around a little bit, like so. This gives the option of suctioning too. So if I needed to suction, um, I can suction down the middle from the sides and it keeps the airway open. So now I'm going to just mention the NPA. So I'll remove the OPA just so we can focus on the NPA now. So always have lubricant. You must make sure it is water-based lubricant. We do not want to use any petroleum-based uh, lubrication. You're going to apply a generous amount of lubrication. Okay. And of course I have gloves on, of course I have all the proper PPE. And then you're gonna wanna follow the anatomy of the nasal passages. So when we go into here, we're gonna go ahead and insert it. If you meet any resistance, and I'm not gonna push it all the way in because this is a mannequin, so we're just demonstrating. But if you meet any resistance, you do not force it because there could be some issues with a deviated septum or there could be some blockages and you don't want to cause harm because you would have potential to bleed or something. So if you meet resistance, do not continue to try that nasal passage. Focus on trying the other and hopefully the other you would be able to insert it all the way until right there. And then now you would leave that in it keeps the airway open. Also, if you needed to suction, you can suction down this and you won't cause any harm. It won't damage the um, nasal passages and you should not get blood. Now that we have an NPA in there, we're going to manually ventilate the patient. So we're gonna make sure we have a good seal. You wanna use the E-seal if it's just you. If you have a partner, you would uh, obviously use two hands to form a seal. And then we're gonna do the one breath every six seconds. So one breath, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, six 1,000, six 1,000. And you're gonna be counting in your head. You're not gonna actually be counting out loud. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, six 1,000. 1, 1, 1, 1, and you wanna have a good seal. You wanna see good chest rise uh, and fall. If you do not, you may need to readjust your seal or readjust the patient's position, okay? After you've done that, some of the concerns you want to check for, be aware of any cyanosis, be aware of any vomiting or any gastric distension. So if you see the tummy start to get a little bit bigger, uh, you may need to adjust the way you're ventilating the patient, okay? If the patient was to vomit, you would need to put the patient on the side and you would need to have some type of suction to help the patient and clear the airway. Um, after you ventilated the patient, now we can remove the equipment, clean up our mess, and that is all. Thank you very much.